Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. <clears throat> I would just like to make uh, uh, you aware of the fact that there's a wonderful program going to be offered here at the parish on May 4th. <clears throat> and it's from an organization called Fork Over Love. And what they do is they come into a community, like say Nanny Cook, and they um, go to local restaurants and they buy, I'm just guessing, about 100, 100, 100 meals from each restaurant to help the local restaurants during this time of pandemic. <clears throat> and then they offer them free to people. And uh, you don't have to have a residency requirement or an income requirement or anything else. Um, it's just an opportunity to have a free meal and you can take it home. <clears throat> it's gonna be on May 4th, 2021. <clears throat> from 5 to 6 p.m. at the uh, St. Mary's parking lot. So you just drive in, get the meal, and go home and enjoy it. No, no strings attached. <clears throat> if you wish to make a free will offering, it's not expected or required or anything like that, but you may. And that would help them to continue this ministry called Fork Over Love. So May 4th, so maybe I also wanted to get it online this morning so we can have that publicized throughout the, throughout the community. Okay, your celebrant's gonna be Father Alco, so be nice to him. <laughs> don't be nice to him, okay, don't, don't make faces at him or anything like that. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, Father. Good morning again. <laughs> Good morning. Would you please stand? The merciful love of the Father fills the earth. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Alleluia. As we begin our liturgy for the fourth Sunday of Easter, we will sing Shepherd of Souls. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. And happy Easter. I haven't been here since then, so I just want to let you know I was having a beautiful morning. Beautiful morning. And who walks in the sacristy? Your <laughs> pastor. Oh, ruin my day. <laughs> Let's begin, as always, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you with unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely by what means he was saved, then all of you and all of the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, in his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know mine and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, Lord Jesus Christ. so hard to believe that we're at the fourth Sunday of Easter already. And as we continue to hear from John's Gospel, which we will hear until really Pentecost, John uses the imageries of such beautiful, beautiful themes for our Lord. Today, he will emphasize Jesus as the Good Shepherd. And so today is commonly known as Good Shepherd Sunday. And so very beautiful. And the next week will be the vine, the branches, and just beautiful, beautiful imagery that John brings out in his gospel. And so as we celebrate this fourth Sunday of Easter with the Good Shepherd, it's also World Vocation Day. So we, we pray that more men and women will hear the call to uh, come forward to be priests and, and religious brothers and sisters. It's very important, especially in our diocese right now. Thank God there are men responding, and slowly but surely, but... Uh, to pray for vocations all over the world, and especially here. Laura Bell is not your typical college graduate. After graduation, she took a job as a sheep herder in Wyoming, not Pennsylvania now. Some of her friends taught that she was crazy, 
But Laura wanted a challenge. Well, she received it. She worked 18 hours a day, seven days a week. Her days began at dawn and ended at sunset. All this time, she was completely alone, except for her dog, her horse, and 2,000 sheep. Once a week, someone rode out across the hills to bring her her food, her man, and rifle shells. Laura's job consisted of keeping the sheep together, moving them about for water and for food, and protecting them from wild animals. When you're out there all alone, she said, there's no one to correct your mistakes. You're so, you are always there on alert because you have to watch for any kind of danger that would attack the sheep. Instance, rattlesnakes. And you don't do dumb things with your horse. Everything has to remain calm. Laura said one of her joys was the weather out in Wyoming. It was one of the biggest headaches though too. The weather determined how the sheep was going to behave and what her day would be like. One morning a group of sheep decided to break away from the main herd. Laura said she spent the rest of the day tracking them all down. And as she found them all, a thunderstorm came and drenched her and the flock. She spent the whole night shivering in a bunch of soggy blankets. Dear people, the story of Laura Bell gives us an insight on just how hard the vocation of a modern day sheep herder can be. Let's go back to the time of Jesus Christ, that ancient shepherds even had a harder job of doing this because there was no horse, no dog, and there was no rifle to help them with their job. They did everything by themselves and even more. But it's against this backdrop that we must read today's gospel. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Who is willing to die for the sheep? They will listen to my voice, and they will become one flock and one shepherd. In other words, Jesus is the fulfillment of the prophecy made by Ezekiel in the Old Testament. And like the good shepherd David, Jesus cares for the weak, the helpless, heals the sick, goes out in search of the stray and the lost sheep. But Jesus does even more. He literally lays down his life for his sheep. Jesus does even more than that. He rises from the dead and shares his own resurrected life with all of us, his sheep. That's why Peter refers in today's first reading, he tells the people that it is through the power of Jesus Christ that the lame has been healed. Peter invites the people to believe in Jesus and to be healed by him spiritually, just as the lame were healed physically. What should our response be to all of this? I know what my response is. I have put an application in now for Father Nash to be a sheep herder. <laughs> Can you imagine that when he walks out there and the sheep will run all over? <laughs> Thank God they won't give him a rifle. But seriously, what is the response to all of this? First, it should be one of gratitude to the true shepherd, Jesus. For through his death and resurrection, we have been saved from our death. And he raised up all of us and will eventually to eternal life. This is what John is referring to in that second reading when he tells us, my dear friends, we are now God's children. But it is not yet clear what we shall become. But we know that when Christ does appear, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And secondly, our response should be one of profound openness to the shepherd. For Jesus is present right now in our midst, in this church, continuing his work of salvation. He continues to care for the weak, the sick, bandage the wounded, bring back the stray, and seek out the lost. Jesus is indeed the Good Shepherd, 
promised by God. Jesus not only laid down his life for us over 2,000 years ago, but he continues to dwell in our midst and to communicate to us his own risen life. My dear people, we know we live in a busy world and we have busy lives. You know what, thinking about this, when I was reflecting on, on this homily and the readings today, to listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd, the True Shepherd, just think in this modern day age. We have every kind of technology, communications, cell phones, iPads, iPods, email, text. We have, what else, emails, texts, there's so many others, there's countless numbers of things that we have at our disposal. But you know what? And our cell phones, of course. But you know what? So many voices, so many voices. But do we take the time to be quiet? For me to shut my mouth, yes. <laughs> but do we take time to be quiet and to listen to Jesus speaking to us? Yes, we need those devices, especially in today's world. But let's maybe sometimes put them aside and and to pray and to listen to what the shepherd is telling us. Because you know what? Sometimes he is speaking to us, and all the time he's speaking to us. But you know what? Maybe we're not listening to the one voice we should be. Because you know what? We are never alone when he speaks to us. Because we need him to speak to us and for us to listen, to help us in our daily life. We know there are many challenges today, especially today and every day of our lives. But you know what? Maybe it's a good thing that we keep on our toes, so to speak, on our feet. But most importantly, again, listening to the voice of the shepherd. That's what is important. And that's what will be important to us at the end of our life when we see him face to face. My dear people, if we do listen to the true voice of the good shepherd, then we have to and must lay down our lives for our family, friends, and you know what, even the stranger, even the stranger, because if we do that, then we are doing the work of Jesus the Good Shepherd. Let's all unite and again respond on the importance of this Good Shepherd Sunday, because again, the Shepherd does lay down his life for all of us and will continue to do that. He will not change because he loves us so much. He died for us. He's been raised from the dead for us. Can't we take a couple minutes in our day to put all those devices aside and listen to him speak to us? Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, the Son, who with the Father, the Son, is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Gracious and loving Father, let us at this time now present our needs to our risen Lord. The response to our petitions is, Lord, hear our prayer. That pastors and ministers guide their flocks with tender care. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. At governments carefully guard the safety and quality of food and water, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That young people preparing for confirmation and graduation, and especially for Abigail, Teresa, Autumn, Rose, and Austin Kofalik, who were baptized here last Sunday, be strengthened for a life of loving service through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians spread the peace of Christ and the joy of Easter in every time and place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of the assembly share God's abundant feast with those who cannot be here, especially the sick and homebound, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That life in all forms be respected in every way, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the prayer request received by our parish's ministry of prayer be heard and answered according to God's holy will. And we pause now to remember our own personal intentions in the silence of our hearts. For all of these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, and especially for this morning's Mass intention for Terry and Rita Thompson, May they rest in the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, may we be open to listen to your Son's voice as we continue to be his faithful disciples. May he always bless us, guide us, and protect us on our journey here on earth and someday reach eternal life. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As the gifts are presented and prepared at the altar, let us sing, Shepherd Me, O God. that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered into his own passion, he took bread and giving thanks, brought it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice of once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We offer, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy, religious, and lay faithful. Remember your servants, Terry and Rita, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we might dare to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever. by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give to you. Look not in our sin, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord.
be with you always and with your spirit. Let us now offer each other a distant sign of peace. Peace, take him. Peace, Father. Peace, Maria. Peace to everyone viewing at home. Peace be with you. You too, Deb. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but only you say the word and my soul shall be. The Good Shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep, and willingly died for his flock. Alleluia. Alleluia. As we have Holy Eucharist, let us please sing, We Are God's People. by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And before we conclude, Father uh, Sean wanted me to announce to you that Our Lady of Mount Carmel Lake Silkworth is selling lottery tickets uh, for, I think it's a three-month period. Uh, they're kind of at a standstill right now. They need more people to buy to help for this major fundraiser. So uh, Father Sean said he'll be during the week around 
if you please consider to buy some uh, raffle tickets. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a wonderful day, everyone, and please remain safe. You too, Father. As we go forth, let us together in one voice sound our Easter joy as we sing Alleluia, Alleluia, let the holy anthem rise. Thank you everyone for joining us for Mass today. Um, also, if any of you are local to, here to Nanakoke, uh, up until this afternoon, I think until 3 o'clock, they're going to be having the Youth Ministry Basket Raffle. Please check the website or Facebook on that one uh, for the times, but uh, do go over and support the Youth Ministry. The Basket Raffle has a lot of uh, awesome prizes if you can get over there. And we will be live streaming tomorrow at 5 p.m. We will be live streaming the, uh, the picking of the the winners and everything like that so uh take care stay safe have a wonderful day god bless